Welcome back to It All Counts, the podcast where we can continue to learn, to grow, and get better together. I have a very special guest today, uh, one I've been knowing for 22 years, a little over 22 years. Uh, I knew him before he knew himself, and it's been a tremendous honor in watching him grow from a young man into a man. Uh, my son, Chase Martin. How you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm happy to have you. How's life treating you? You know, good. Just got off the plane from school. We uh, had a game last night, won, so feeling good. Done with school, so also good in that sense. Uh, just happy to be here. And what school do you attend? Uh, I attend Purdue University, so I also play uh, basketball there. I'm on a men's basketball team, and I study mechanical engineering. Ooh, mechanical engineering. Yeah, that's out of my league now. <laughs> Is that tough? Uh, uh, yes. Um, more, more tough than I'd like to admit sometimes, but uh, uh, it's all worth it. I value school, I value basketball, so at the end of the day, it's uh, not, never too much for me. Now, are you on pace to get your degree? Yes, I, I'll get my degree in the spring. So spring, May, so what, May 2024? Mm -hmm, yes. How does that feel? Um, I, I haven't really come to that realization yet that I'm graduating. I mean, it felt like the same way in high school, like, man, I'm graduating and, uh, couple buttons that doesn't, doesn't really seem real almost but uh just taking it one day at a time so not really looking too far ahead i like that so how does it feel to be home for the holidays oh uh, good you know i don't get to go home too much during the school year i'm uh, at school probably 10 10 and a half months out of the year so mm -hmm. you know it's happy to be home happy to be with the family good well one of the things uh that i i always enjoy when you're at home but one of the things I learned from you, because uh, it seems as if my time off, I was doing a lot of eating, all kinds of eating, and that was a good thing. But the one of the things I learned from you when you always come home, uh, but the last time really, the smoothies, how you would consistently get up in the morning and make the smoothies. And I think that was one of the biggest things that was a turning point for me, because I was probably 10, 15 plus pounds normally what, than what I usually carry mm -hmm. and uh, watching you do that. So is that part of your regular daily habit, eat, drinking smoothies or eating smoothies, I'm not which one, which one is it, eating or drinking oh, I, smoothies? I say more drinking because okay, okay. uh, I, I like a, more like a juice consistency to my smoothies, so okay. it's more like a drink for me, but um, yeah, it's more, it's more of a daily routine for me, just um, for fitness goals, kind of, okay. just I like to stay on track and I'm very routine based, so mm -hmm. keeping the same routine most every day is just, it's good for me. So you think root, uh, smoothies are helpful? I, I do. It's helpful for a number of things for me. Uh, you can get your decent amount of carbohydrates and s sugars from like fruit, and then you get protein from obviously like whey protein powders or like a peanut butter powder. And then um, you can also in get some vitamins from different supplements that you can buy. Obviously, that's at your own discretion, but it's uh, stuff along that, those lines. You can get a numerous nutritional. Uh, benefits from drinking smoothies. So you would recommend smoothies from youth to 80, 90 years old, you would recommend it? Uh, yeah, it's a quick and easy process. Uh, not, not something that you need a lot of practice doing, just uh, it's more so what you, what you like to drink or like, like to have. Well, I think one of my biggest issues, especially when you went off to school, you weren't at home, I didn't do a lot of measuring with my smoothie. It just, yeah. <laughs> so it was more, whatever I liked the most, that's what I was putting in my smoothie, but you think it's important to do some measuring with it. Well, I like to, for me personally, I like to get, um, I like calories, like mm -hmm. knowing what I get as far as in my macros. So mm -hmm. your, how much protein, your carbohydrates, your fat, how much you're getting of that in each meal and what you're eating. So that kind of stuff's important to me. So measuring out what I'm, what I'm consuming is, uh, is like essential to keep those goals. So yeah, I, I'll, m most times I'll measure out what I eat or what I put in my smoothies. And I've also like looked into getting uh, food scales so that you can weigh what you eat too, you know, mm. as far as like chicken and how much rice you have. Well, we're gonna do that exam next time. But when you said macros for those that don't, what does that mean, macros? Like your macronutrients, so like your protein, it's, it's obviously gonna be different for whatever body type you have, how tall you are, how much you weigh, how old you are. So it's gonna be different based on what stage you are in life or what you're born with, really. But um, from person to person, that, stuff, that kind of stuff's important for whatever goals you have, whether it's gaining weight, losing weight, building muscle, uh, maintaining muscle. So 
just knowing your body type and really how your body works, that's a, um, you can really get a good sense of what you need for your macronutrients, like your, how much protein you'll need a day, how many carbohydrates you'll need a day, how much fat you need a day, mm. vitamin A, vitamin C, stuff along those lines. Mm. That was an exam. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get started because, again, I, I've always enjoyed your smoothie, so I'll, I'll kind of follow your lead and you can let me know how this thing going to flow. Okay. So we have a couple ingredients here. Um, I'm just going to start with the uh, whey protein powder. It doesn't really matter which brand you use. I mean, you can obviously do your own research if you want, but uh, this is just two scoops. We're making it for two people. Obviously, it would be different from person to person. So right now, it's just two scoops of uh, whey protein powder. So, And it doesn't really matter which uh, way you assemble it or how you assemble it. Just That's how I do it. And then um, we're making a peanut butter and chocolate banana smoothie mm. today. So um, this is peanut butter protein powder. And um, for those who know, peanut butter is a little high in fat content, but uh, peanut butter usually has healthy fats. I like it for a snack, but peanut butter powder usually reduces the fat content inside uh, that pe peanut butter usually carries and um, keeps the protein. So some people like the peanut butter powder alternative for like smoothies or oats, things like along those lines. This wasn't pre-measured, so I'm gonna take two t tablespoons of this now I have a question. Best I can. What's the difference between the powder and the actual peanut butter? See, I like the regular, I would say old school peanut butter mm -hmm. in the jar. What's the difference? To be honest, I could not tell you. Okay. But uh, I know that it's not as high as in the fat concentration. This one is the, not as high. The, yeah. Yes. Your, your uh, powder is not as high as the fat concentration. I know that can be important for somebody's fitness goals. Yes. But to me personally, I like peanut butter. So I'll, I'll eat it. I'll, tr I'll use regular peanut butter for snacks or for smoothies. It doesn't really matter to me. Okay, I got you. And then next we have a few bananas. I didn't, we didn't measure these out. Just a few bananas going here. So frozen bananas. Frozen that's, bananas. That's good. Yeah, for smoothies, uh, if you don't have frozen fruit, you can use ice cubes. But for the most part, I like using frozen fruit, so you don't have to carry ice cubes. I don't have an ice maker. Actually, I do have an ice maker at school, but I don't really use it. So I just, um, I use frozen fruit. I, I felt that that was the best option for me. Okay. And cocoa powder, this is more for taste than anything. Smells good. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. See, if you weren't around, I'd just dip all that in there. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's more for taste. It's not, it's not too bad for you. Usually, okay. Cocoa powder is pretty, usually pretty good for you. I don't know okay. how much we should use of this, but I might use a tablespoon yeah, of this. Why not? Like I said, if you weren't around, <laughs> Yeah, my teammates all my teammates will make fun of me sometimes. I'll, they'll they'll see me eating desserts at dinner sometimes. They'll be like, "Wait, did you count the calories in that?" I'm trying to make fun of me, but I, it's it's all fun, man. But uh, it is. I, I do take it seriously though. They they think it's funny, but it's whatever. I feel you. Uh, we can add these strawberries in there if you want. Okay. I mean, I probably me personally, I probably wouldn't add strawberries to a chocolate and peanut butter smoothie, but <laughs> yeah, but. You know, presentation of it. And then next, you add your liquid. Uh, usually I add um, uh, some type of, my smoothies usually are more uh, fruit based, so I'll use like some frozen berries, mm -hmm. some whey protein powder, and then I'll do like a um, fruity drink or low calorie like drink mm -hmm. along like a body armor or maybe like a, sometimes a Gatorade, not, not really always, but most times okay. in body armor. So something along those consist that line. But you can also use water too if you don't want the extra sugars or um, calories in there. And or milk. Some people like milk in their smoothies. I'm not too big a fan of milk, but if that's your prerogative. Mm -hmm. So this is what four cups of water. I'm probably gonna add two in here. That's about. A little bit more. Mm. So I like my smoothies with a little bit runnier of consistency, but so this will be a little bit more runny. But if you like a thicker smoothie, you'd probably add more ice cubes and more frozen fruit. And so I'll make the smoothie now. And 
So now that's all, all that's left to do is just drink the smoothie now. Toast. Toast on a phenomenal smoothie. Mm. Mm. Not bad. Splendid. Splendid. And you said this, you don't normally use <laughs> chocolate with this remedy. No. <laughs> I'm not, um, you, yeah, usually for smoothies, I'm not um, big on chocolate or peanut butter. Okay. I'll usually more just use the berries and the whey protein, and then mostly that. Add some vitamins, maybe some kale and spinach, okay. but never really uh, chocolate peanut butter. It's more, I feel like that's more like a dessert <laughs> snack for me, so that's, uh, yeah. But it's, it did taste good, so. Yes. Now, how many days a week do you do smoothies? I'd say... Probably three to four days a week. It really just depends on the day. Yes. It's class schedule that day. What I'm doing if I have time to make it, yes. really. So, so someone in the workforce, an adult in the workforce, can they prep smoothies the night before and they have them for the week? Uh, yeah, that's definitely possible. I mean, it's all, it's all about your, really, if you want the smoothies, like your preparation for it, what, how much time you put in, like, or Really, if you want it, to yes. be honest. Yeah. So if you really like smoothies, if you like that for a meal alternative or a meal supplement to like your workout routine or your daily life, it, it's definitely doable. You can prep it beforehand or make it right before you go to work, something along those lines, but um, it's definitely doable. Not, it doesn't take too long as we shown in this video. You just have to have your ingredients and in blend the smoothie. Thank you, that's, that's been a great segment. And uh, when we return, we'll do segment two in our old habitat. Thank you. Ah, uh, splendid. Mm. So Chase, uh, simple, but I think impactful question I'm about to ask. Who is Chase Martin? Um, really um, a son, a brother, um, a nephew, a grandson, you know, I'm just a member of the Martin family, a member of the Jones family from my mom's side, but a, a follower of uh, Christ. It, that's very important to me as well. That's just who I am, you know, because all the other stuff I do, school, basketball, it's just stuff I do. Stuff I do, but uh, who I am, it's like I'm Conzo and Roberta's son. I'm Josh and Addison's brother. I'm uh, Sandra and Mary's grandson. So I'm a, the son of uh, Jesus. I mean, God, God, the Father, Jesus Christ. You know, that's who I am. That's who I, that's how I carry myself. So that's who I am. But um, more than anything, I'd say I'm pretty disciplined. Um, well, yeah, just disciplined. I say big, uh, big defining word for me would be discipline. I agree with that. So. As a young guy, and you probably didn't see it as much, but as you matured, and your dad being a coach, how were the different moves that you feel like they helped you, they impact you in certain ways? How were the different moves in your life, and did you learn to see things differently as you grew older? Uh, definitely, because um, you you and mom can attest. I was, uh, I wouldn't say, I would say I wasn't the best behaved child <laughs> growing up uh, in school at home. You know, I was a uh, very talkative, I still am, but I've learned how to reel that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm very, I'm pretty social with the people I know, you know, but um, I don't know, moving, moving around a bunch just taught me, taught me a lot about myself, really. Mm -hmm. Like what I like to do, which is play basketball, you know, and stuff that, about myself that I didn't really know, like I, if I figured I'm a pretty disciplined person, I, I like routine, I like structure. That's it's good for me. Mm -hmm. But um more so the value of 
having family around me because you know friends places they all come and go but you josh addison mom you guys always been the same as you got older did you, did you feel a certain way like man I, I was just making friends and all of a sudden we because i think you know from indiana then three years missouri then three years tennessee three years california and then back to Missouri, but then you were off to college as well. Did you feel like those moves as you were trying to make friends, like, man, dad, wow. Did you ever think that? Uh, definitely, especially when I was uh, younger, especially for those uh, first move out of Indianapolis and Springfield, Tennessee, I definitely felt more like uh, more like apathy towards the, the whole matter. Cause you know, at that young of age, all you can think about is yourself. I, I, I know there's psychology out there. It's like everything at, at a certain age and below, you think the whole world kind of like revolves around yeah. you. So, you know, at at that point in time, it just felt, those moves felt like it was being done to me rather than for me. You know, I didn't see it as like dad's advancing his career. He's providing for us. He's providing for not only his immediate family, but everybody else around him. So, you know, giving opportunities to different coaches, uh, providing for your mom how you always wanted to so mm. I didn't really see that, that but like what kid does you know yeah. what kid at that age does so but uh, growing older going through those moves I didn't really start to get it till that move from California because mm-hmm. at that point I was in high school so I had a greater understanding about you know the importance of you know financial freedom mm-hmm. being able to you know, provide for yourself and others, as well as, I don't know, getting the experience of getting to travel, giving to live, live, live different places, meet different people. But, um, yeah, I'd say growing up, I didn't have that maturity. It's just, you know, you make friends and you have to leave those friends. You think it's the end of the world at that point. But as you, um, as you grow up, you realize while those experiences are um, cherished, it's like it's not the end of the world. I still I still talk to people I, I know from Springfield. I still talk to people I know from Knoxville. I still talk to people from uh Piedmont, California. I still talk to people from uh, Columbia, Missouri. It's like those those the true relationships won't di- won't die just cuz you move. And um if anything it gets stronger just cuz of the distance, but it definitely growing up I I gained that maturity of get, gaining perspective really. Oh, I like that. So what would you say to a, a, a young kid, male or female, whether their parents are in the military, their coaches, and constantly moving and traveling, or even in the corporate world, what one or two pieces of advice would you, advice would you give them? Um, really uh, cherish the relationships you make, you know. Cherish the people you meet. Um, work hard at relationships. But don't. I would say gain a sense of perspective on everything because it's hard for a young kid to teach a young kid that because, you know, as I said, like at a certain at a certain age range, you think everything's about you. You don't really get the bigger picture and you might never get the bigger picture, but you have to just understand that while it may seem like it's not really being done to you, it's being done for you, for those around you. I like that. What are so, you know, as parents, we're just constantly going, and then mom did a phenomenal job when I was, you know, working, traveling, recruiting, whatever it was at games. And mom did a tremendous job. But what were some of the things that you think, as a young guy, and to where you are now, what are some of the things that you thought we did a good job of as parents? I'd say being present in our lives. You know, I feel like it'd be with a job you have, it'd be easy to detach. Mm-hmm. You know, you got so much going on, you have to. You're worried about. Fan reactions. You're worried about administration. Mm-hmm. You know how they how they are perceiving how your season's going. You're worried about keeping eighteen to twenty two year olds in check. How mm-hmm. you know making them sure they perform, making sure they stay healthy, making sure they stay on top of academics so they stay el- eligible. You know you have so many things that are coming at you day in and day out. Mm-hmm. So it's like that could be a good excuse to you know check out or. Not a good excuse, but it could be excuse to check out or not be present in, you know, your your kids' lives. Mm-hmm. But uh, I say you and mom both did a good job being present. You know, whenever you were home, you were always 
ask us how we were doing. You would try to make the games whenever you could. You'd always be present at Addison's stuff. You'd be present at Josh's swim meets whenever he did swim and track in high school. So I was, you did a good job as well as mom was always, not by herself, but for the most part, she had to take on a little bit extra of a load, mm -hmm. especially because you had to travel so much just for the profession you were in. She always did a good job of getting us to where we needed to be as well as um, being there for us whenever, you know, stuff got hard in school, social stuff, stuff like stuff along those lines. How was it when you left home and you chose Purdue? Uh, you were allowed to walk on the team, which is, I'm very appreciative of Coach Payne and his staff for that, but how was that transition from high school to college? Yeah, super appreciative of Coach Payne, yeah. That was a huge opportunity for me. It still is, still paying. Still pays dividends in my life, you know. I really appreciate Coach Payne, the staffer, and let me walk on to Purdue. But um, that transition, um, I was at that point. I was ready to get out the house, you know, because <laughs> um, I've been with you guys for 18 years. I was like, man, I need something new. But um, and it was COVID at that point in time, so mm. we were really mm. stuck in the house. So it was close proximity at all times. Mm. I was like, man, I'm just ready to get out the house. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it was different. College is different because um, you have the illusion of free time, I'd say, especially being a student athlete, you have the illusion of free time. You know, you have less hours in the classroom than you did in high school. When high school, you feel like you, you're in the classroom all day. You're like, man, it's boring. But in college, you have like, man, I don't have to go to class if I have, if I don't want to. You know, they don't keep um, attendance like they did in high school. Um, and then you have less time in class than you did in high school and you're but uh, it's a, I, I say it's an illusion of free time because the, the course works harder. It's at a faster pace in high school. It's um, the exams are more rigorous, so it's you don't really have that much free time as you think you do. And there's also a lot of extracurricular activities that you could do. And there's lots of clubs, high schools, sporting events. I mean, you get to meet new people. You know, I mean, Purdue has a campus of forty thousand people, so it's like you get to. There's a lot, lot to be offered. I mean, you're right in between two big cities in Indianapolis and Chicago, so it's like you have a lot to. There's a lot to do, so. So it was more maintain like, um, you know, perspective. Like, okay, I'm in a um, new situation, and um, I do have a lot more freedom than I used to because I'm obviously not under my parents' roof. I'm really governing on my own rules, but what's really best for me? So it's like that's where kind of uh, as I was speaking about earlier, like the discipline kicked in, you know, being disciplined in everything you do, whether it's schoolwork, basketball, um, health, you know, just keep keeping discipline because that's all everything is. Like that's all, if you want to get somewhere, you have to have some sort of discipline, you know, whether it's coaching, medical field, engineering, and being the president of the United States, you have to have discipline, you have to have a work ethic, you have to be able to get stuff done while also maintaining other things in life. How does it feel? Because you mentioned COVID, you're seeing you. How does it feel being a valedictorian? Uh, so not really being acknowledged for that, but also not even walking across the stage with your senior class because of COVID and you transition right on a college campus in June. How was the whole experience? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was a little sad that I didn't get to come back for graduation. It wasn't really a full-on graduation, of course, because of COVID, but I would have got to walk across the stage, see my friends again from high school, and got uh, acknowledged as a valedictorian. But, um, you know, uh, it was, I didn't um, I didn't think too much of it at the time, just because I was in a point where I was like, man, I'm ready to get out the house, so I, I want to I wanna try something new. But thinking back, oh, I wish I did have that experience, you know, because being valedictorian is like, it's not an easy feat, whether no matter what stage of academics you are, you know, graduate school, college, high school, that's a, that's a, it's a hard thing to do, you know, staying on the top of your academics, regardless of what you have going on. So wish, I wish that could have gone differently, but um, I'm definitely happy with the way things have gone so far. So I okay. wouldn't say I regret anything. So what what is the life I and mean, this is kind of twofold in some way. What is the life of a student athlete, but also got us a walk on on a team, the rigors that goes with all of that? Uh, life as a student athlete is definitely tough, you know, because 
No, you don't really see it from the outside, but we work so hard in the gym. We're on the we're in Mac Arena all the time. <laughs> like I, I I probably get there most days around ten thirty, eleven, and we won't leave till six. And what what do you guys rank? Or one, number one in the country. Okay. So it's like, yeah. you know, you you get out what you put in. Yeah, I agree. So I mean, everybody works hard for do- top from Zach Eady down to the last guy. I mean, we all work hard, yeah. you know. But it's like because we all have that perspective. Like, well, everybody has to give up something to be in the position yeah. we're in, and that's working hard. That's staying on top of everything. That's um, you know, you have to sacrifice something to be that good at uh, that good of a team, you know. But um, yeah, it's definitely people don't really understand it from the outside looking all you see is the the games we play you don't really see what goes on behind the scenes what we have to deal with i mean along with probably i wouldn't you would have probably estimates of like time because you know ncaa regulates out how much time we are on the court but yes. what was it like 20 hours a week we get on the court yes not including probably an hour for lifts and individual work another hour and then mm-hmm. film another hour so you take that that's a, what would you say? That's maybe 40, it's probably yes. 40 hours a week you're doing specific basketball stuff. And those hours don't count towards games. So it's like 40 hours a week plus games you have a week. And then on top of that, you may have 15 credit hours for courses that you have to complete. And you can't slack on courses because if you're ineligible, you you can't play. Mm-hmm. So it's, a, it's definitely been tough. So. Just to, especially in a school like Purdue, which has a, I'm in mechanical engineering at Purdue, and they have a top five mechanical engineering program. So, mm-hmm. the rigor that comes with an engineering discipline at any school, as well as being a student athlete, is just mm-hmm. it has it has been difficult at times. Uh, more more difficult than I'd like to admit sometimes. But you know, if it's what you value, it's how disciplined you are. I value school. I mean, I don't love school, but I do value it. I value the um, the education I value the the opportunity school brings the networking the connections you can have through school but I also but I do love I really do love basketball so that so being in the gym all that those hours just really isn't a problem for me but uh, if you're able to have that kind of perspective on the stuff you do I don't think anything's really impossible I agree with that and that's very well said but I, I remember my last game we lost to Memphis to go to the Sweet 16 in 95. And I was so exhausted in that locker room, I was, I was happy it was over. I was happy it was over. Again, I was upset we lost the game. But I was so happy it was over because I was exhausted. I mean, I just, I, I had nothing left in me when it, when it came to giving what I had to Purdue basketball because I felt like I tried to lay it on the line every night, even in practice I took it. And then also the rehab with my knees and all those things. Um, and it wasn't for me, it wasn't engineering, but it was restaurant, hotel, tourism management, which was suitable for me. And it was very effective. And I hadn't used that degree yet, but maybe I will one day. But just I was happy it was over because, man, the time you put into it, um, trying to get better, working on your game, the three hours. And we would go three hours every day. So you're talking about seven days a week. We practice six. That's three hours on the floor. That's three hours. That, that's, mm-hmm. So that's 18 on the floor. And that's not counting you getting whatever extra in. And at that time, the extra was, was difficult because there was no practice gym. So it's like yeah. men's and women's basketball had one gym mm-hmm. and you had to find time to get in there and get your work in, whether it's a.m., p.m., but you had to get that extra work in. Uh, but I, I was I was very appreciative of the four years, but but also happy that thing was over. So my, my thing for you, um, what do you do? Because you plan to go to grad school, I'm assuming. Um, as on the table, not okay. not too sure yet. Okay. Um, any thoughts if you did go to grad school, which you might study? If I did go to grad school, I'd probably do um, a med- medical school, mm-hmm. most likely. I- I've been taking pre med classes on top of engineering, on top of basketball, so that has been a bit of a bit of a whirlwind these past couple years. <laughs> But I, I did have all A's and one B this last semester, so. Oh, congratulations. Victory, a victory for me in my book. But uh, yeah, in med- medical school, just cause, um, I don't know, I've, I've always been interested in the science and 
with STEM majors in science, technology, engineering, and math. So everything um, in that specter, I've always had aptitude for in school and always been interested in. I've always been good with numbers. I've always been good in technology, stuff like that. So I've always had an interest in it. In medical school, caught my eye later in high school and um, rekindled it while I was in college. So that's why I decided to start taking pre-med courses. I've done pretty well in my pre-med courses. So that's definitely an option I have on the table. And then um, that's just a problem for me is I feel like at this point I have too many options, you know. Uh, I'm in mechanical engineering. I'm graduate with most likely above a 3.5 in mechanical engineering. And then pre-med courses, I'll be done with that by the end of this, this next semester coming up. Then I'll be... I'll be done with playing a very successful Purdue team in my four years. We've been, we haven't, expect, uh, these last three years, we haven't lost a, a non conference game. So the 33 straight? Yeah. We're the f- first team in Big Ten history to do it. Third team ever. Well, oh, I, I shouldn't jinx. Uh, we have one, one more non conference game. Oh, yeah. To complete it. But yes. we'd be the third team ever to do it. I think. Is what? UCLA one of them? I think UCLA. Coach Wooden. Or it might have been fourth. It might have been fourth. So UCLA, Duke with uh, Christian Leitner. Okay. And, and then there might have been another team in there. But. Okay. No, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal feat. Why? Yeah. I appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure these, what, 22 years. Uh, you're a wonderful human being, in my opinion. Um, and it's been a joy to watch you grow from a young kid, a baby, a kid into a man. And uh, we got a lot of life left in us, and I appreciate everything God has uh, afforded me when it comes to you as well as your brother and sister. And I can continue to count it all joy. And uh, to our All Count podcast family, this has been a great, great episode for me. One I continue to learn from uh, this young man because he continues to educate me. His resilience, his discipline, his determination, uh, those are lessons I think I continue to learn at my age, the discipline piece. Uh, and what I learned uh, years ago, we're forever growing. So it doesn't matter how old we are, we continue to grow. So again, thank you. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you like it really much, if you like it a lot, bring somebody along with you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.